from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, August 23rd. Okay, so welcome to the very first official day, full day, let's say, of Virgo season. If you haven't listened to the Astro Forecast as of yet, I'm going to recommend you do so. I'm also going to recommend that you download the Virgo season e-guide. Make an $11 investment in your life. Just follow the energy guide and see how you can align your life with your goals, with your visions, with your dreams by following all of the energy shifts coming at us here in Virgo season. Side note, Uranus is going to go retrograde on the same day that Pluto was retrograding back into the 29th critical karmic degree of Capricorn energy. And of course, we're moving into eclipse season. There's definitely a lot to stay ahead of. We are definitely going to have some curve balls thrown at us, especially towards the end of Virgo season. And because Virgo season, it's time to get organized. It's time to get our shit together. I would really recommend that you follow that particular energy and invest in yourself. So we do have the moon in Aries energy going void, of course, at 8.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Here's the kicker. We're not locking in into Taurus energy until 8.01 p.m. That is a huge, huge, huge amount of time that things are shaky, things are uncertain, things are unstable. But of course, now being in Virgo energy, we have to identify the problems. We have to really focus in on the issues in order for us to fix them, heal them, repair them. It is a very busy day in the cosmos. There are 16 different aspects taking place here today. 11 of them are going to involve the moon. So the moon still in Aries energy, giving us a little bit of aggression, a little bit of a pep in our step, if you will, a new motivation, a new determination to actually jump in and initiate something new. The moon in Aries is going to sextile beautiful interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. And of course, this is our second interaction. There was a positive interaction that we had with Mr. Jupiter here yesterday. Although this is a different kind of positive interaction, we're definitely seeing the nudge, if you will, in a different path, in a different train of thought, in a different direction. We're feeling a little bit more optimistic, a little bit more confident over our abilities to actually take control of the situation and circumstance and do something to be better, to improve our overall health and wellness, our overall daily routine and function. Mercury, ruler over this Virgo season, who is currently retrograde in the heart and soul of the Zodiac in the Leo energy, again, reviewing, revising, reanalyzing matters of the heart. Mercury is going to be making a positive interaction with Neptune, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. This is going to work very well for us to actually start being able to make sense of some of the creative ideas that we're having, some of the visions that we're having, some of the intuitive insights that we're having. We are starting to realize how to A, align our heart and head with a new vision, new goal, new dream, B, strategize, plan on what we could actually do to bring forth this particular realm reality into fruition. And see, we are definitely, again, unpacking a lot of the hesitation, a lot of the blockages, a lot of the challenges of the past to unlock a new boldness, a bravery, a courage to actually take action, to make moves and to bring this new vision to life. The moon in Aries energy going to sextile Mars. Mars being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, even our anger. Mars is in Gemini energy again, planning, strategizing where it is that we're going to pour our time, energy, and attention. We are definitely leaning towards one choice point, one path, one direction over the other. Mars rules over the Aries energy that the moon is in. So there's a lot of intensity here. This is positive intensity. This is hype up motivation motivational determination type of energy in order to pick a path and actually see this particular path through. The moon, of course, is going to take a little bit of a dive. We have a harsh interaction going on with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, who is currently in Virgo energy. 
This is going to help us be a little bit more aggressive sorting through issues of our heart space, of our head space. Again, we're looking back, we're analyzing matters of the heart in order to pick apart where it is that we could have done better, where it is that we have to reframe certain situations, especially where pain and trauma is still alive and well. We're definitely trying to get down to the nitty gritty on where it is that we have to be a little bit more aggressive to go after our wants, our needs, our desires. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, who was retrograde in Leo energy, going to try and beautiful interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer, who is retrograde in Aries energy. This is fire on fire action. We love fire on fire action because it helps us to burn through the emotions, burn through the attachments to the past, burn down any kind of, let's call it not so nice perspective that we may be having. Because again, we have to turn that pain into power. We have to flip the script. We have to be building ourselves up. That fire energy is very regenerative. So once it kind of cuts away the crap, we're able to renew our soul and our spirit, our new spark, new fire, new flame. And especially where this new version of self is concerned, we're really pushing the boundaries of healing our head space and heart space, reframing situations that of course had us make made us feel a little bit weak, a little bit vulnerable in the past. We're flipping that pain into power. We're using it as motivation, as determination to do better. The moon is then going to try to Mercury. So our heart and our head, they're on the same page. There's a little bit of, I'm going to call it spice, a little bit of aggression, a little bit of tenacity there in order for us to kind of lean into this boldness, this bravery, this courage, this aggression, this fire, this spark, this flame that will continue to burn very brightly in order for us to advocate for ourselves, to follow our heart space and to really express how we truly feel. The moon is going to come up to bump into team up with Chiron. This means that again, we have an ending just as much as there is a beginning. The Chiron energy is the wounds. It's also how we heal the wounds. Now, again, emotionally speaking, we do have to feel a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit not so good within our own skin in order to illuminate where it is that we have to work a little bit harder to build ourselves up, to look at ourselves through a very, very, I'm going to say more supportive lens. I think that's where the energy is going to take us just when we're pushing forward, just when we're trying to build ourselves up. We may hit a snag. We have to sit in that funk in order to flip the script and definitely start orienting, seeing where some of these blockages, these challenges are actually an opportunity for a major growth, a major healing spurt. It is at 8.45 a.m. again, Eastern Standard Time, that the moon is going to go void, of course. Things get a little bit shaky, a little bit unstable, especially in our emotional realm. The sun, fresh in this Virgo energy, though, going to make a positive interaction with that north node in Aries, which means that we are coming up with a plan, with a strategy on where it is that we can do better, where we can improve, where we can grow, where we can learn where we can heal, trying to get on that right path to reach this new mission, this new quest, this new purpose. But we do have to bring a certain realization to the forefront to realize what is blocking us, where we have bad habits, where we're essentially the problem, where it is that we need to flip that inner dialogue, flip that script into something a little bit more supportive. The moon, well, in this Aries energy, but void, of course, is going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the Great Awakener. This is likely going to send a lightning bolt of excitement, passion, uh, maybe a little bit of restlessness, maybe a little bit of anxiety, just because it's a lot of raw energy. This is helping us to see different perspectives, to get downloaded with new insight, to help us pivot, make a spontaneous move in a new path, in a new direction. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, is then going to make a positive interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. This is, again, a full review of matters of the heart. We are looking back back 
replaying, relooping, revising certain situations, especially where our needs were not being met in relationship dynamics or in just overall safety and security in our day to day lives. This is helping us to put into perspective what we can do differently in the present moment, what we need to do differently in order to create a different outcome moving forward. The moon is then going to interact with Venus, bringing a new emotional disposition to again be kind of aggressive damn well hell bent, damn well and determined to actually implement some of these boundaries to make these adjustments to our heart and head to actually be successful in upping our game, upping our worth, upping our self love. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Neptune, who of course is retrograde in this Pisces energy. This tells us that the moon is nearing the 29th critical crisis degree. The moon interacting with Neptune is going to give us a little bit of a refresher, renewal in our soul and spirit, definitely receiving some intuitive gut feelings on what it is that we are building towards. Again, pushing us into an aggressive place in our mental plane to really move into la la land, to really conjure up a new goal, new vision, new dream for us to be striving towards. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money is going to make a very harsh interaction with Chiron. So this is going to bring up all of the feels, bring up all of the wounds. Now, let's just put it this way. The Virgo energy that Venus is in, we do have to bring up a lot of the, let's call it negative mindsets, not so nice thoughts and feelings. We have to really analyze and critique where it is that we made some choices in the past that have ended up not so well for us in this present moment so that we can figure out how to heal those particular wounds and set ourselves up for success moving into the future. So again, we have to identify the problem in order to fix it. But again, with Chiron really in this retrograde, in this Aries energy, helping us to examine the parts that we could improve, that we could do better on, that we need to heal, we are going to identify the issues, flip the script, do the work within ourselves in order to turn this particular wound into a sense of healing. 108 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon shifts into Taurus energy. You're definitely going to feel this, um, especially coming out of this Aries energy where there's like all this raw energy, this restlessness, this aggression, if you will, to get shit done, to kind of move on and see some progress. The moon in Taurus kind of anchors us. We do slow down. It can initially feel like we hit a brick wall. It's definitely not a bad thing, but we need to slow down. We need to become more present. We need to become more aware of our physical body, how it is that we're actually feeling, especially in response to a lot of these new ideas that we're having. We have to become very aware, very present in the present moment. We have to slow down, stop, smell those roses so that we can really gauge how it is that we're thinking and feeling about certain ideas, certain goals, certain visions, and of course, certain dreams. The moon in Taurus energy is going to jump right into the boxing ring, fight it out with Pluto, the great transformer who was retrograde in this Aquarius energy. This isn't going to feel good. It's not supposed to. It is supposed to be pretty intense, highlighting for us where it is that there is this want, need, and desire to constantly be projecting ourselves into future visions, into future plans, and where the moon in Taurus would prefer to stop thinking that far into the future and just enjoy the present moment. There is going to be a heaviness, a weight kind of accumulate. We're definitely going to feel that on our heart space, on our head space. Again, Pluto intensifies pretty much everything. This is illuminating where it is that we are going through some growing pains, especially thinking about the future, realizing in context, in comparison to our present moment, what needs to stay, what needs to go. Seems like a lot of work, seems like a very long to-do list. We would rather not focus on those particular things right now. Thus, the constant effort to keep ourselves grounded, to keep ourselves in this present moment. The moon in Taurus, then going to trine, beautiful interaction with the sun in Virgo energy. We get the trine because we got some earth on earth action taking place here. Anytime that the sun and the moon are coming together in any kind of aspect, there's going to be an emotional awareness of a new want, new need, new desire. Because this is a trine, this is a gentle nudge in the right direction where we are starting to realize again where we have to slow down 
earth energies. We like to slow down. We like to be present. We like to focus on the physical realm. We have not a negative narrative by examining what we could do better or what we could improve on or what we wish was different. Instead, we're looking through a lens of where can we make ourselves happier, feel more secure, more safe? How can we bring more happiness, more joy, more comfort into this present moment, into our day-to-day -day lives, into the here and now? So definitely not a bad vibe. We're going to receive some very good insight on what we have power and control over in this present moment, in the here and now, to change, to adjust, to transform, to orient for us having a much happier, much better experience. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Taurus energy semi-squaring, which is a little bit of tension and conflict with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. So again, this is an element where we're really just trying to stay in the present moment. Saturn, of course, being retrograde is an inner reflection an inner analyzation, if you will, on where it is that we're closing the door on certain chapters, but it's so karmic in nature. It's so let's call it heavy in the healing journey that again, kind of bringing the vibe down. We don't really care to think that far in the past. We definitely don't want to think about what we have to remove, what we have to kind of collapse and what we have to kind of clear the space of before we can start building something better in the place. It sounds like a lot of work. We're just trying to chill. We're just trying to get aligned. We're just trying to focus on the good things and make ourselves feel a little bit more comfortable in a very uncomfortable time. So again, we don't want to think too far into the future. We definitely don't want to look too far into the past. We want to focus all of our time, energy, attention on enjoying or doing what we have to do to enjoy this present moment.